G'day everyone. Please accept our apologies. Just a couple of little gremlins in the system. There's no good asking me because I have no idea. But Bob and Daniel have got us up and running. And welcome to the show. This is my YouTube channel and it's been absolutely a delight to make absolute coverage of the entire world in the wonderful sport of fishing. Now tonight we've got a good show. You know why? Because I say so. Bob and Daniel have been very, very busy. But a lot of you who go onto the social media, which I don't understand, I sort of understand a little bit of Facebook, something of mine in the last couple of weeks has gone viral. I think that's the term that's used. And it involved me going to the McDonald's at St Kilda in Metropolitan Melbourne, opposite Luna Park, which is an entertainment complex, and getting my usual two soft serves for 70 cents Australian each, $1.40, I think I can afford it. And what happened was just magnificent. When I went in there, I was aware of a, of a group of young people, quite loud, but enjoying themselves. Uh, there was yet one young boy with Down syndrome who I recognised uh, from Geelong, that I'd had uh, contact with him down the track with fishing and football. And they asked me to uh, do a little bit of a cameo in relation to my football broadcasting. Now, a lot of people out there, particularly out of Australia, wouldn't know that I broadcast for a long, long time on Metropolitan Radio, a uh, station called 3AW, who I'm still with on a Friday and Saturday night. And uh, I had some characters, and that's what really made me go to the footy. There's a bloke called Gary Ablett. Well, there's two blokes called Gary Ablett. There's Gary Ablett Sr. and Gary Ablett Jr. But Gary Ablett Sr., he was just an excitement machine. And in the 1989 grand final at the start of it, when there was just a, an absolute roar from 120,000 people, uh, Gary Ablett took the first mark of the, of the game and it was just magnificent. And why I called him Yablett <clears throat> reminds me of when I used to go to the Mintone Theatre as a kid and get six pennies of lollies and pay a shilling to watch the film. Abbott and Costello were flying upside down in a uh, Tiger Moth, which is, is a, a beautiful old vintage uh, aircraft that it was used right throughout the war. And, and Abbott and Costello were upside down and Abbott uh, was, was in the front, Lou Costello was down the back, and Lou Costello said, he Abbott! Anyhow, I've set it up, you're totally confused, but this is what happens at McDonald's at 20 past 12 after my radio show, and I got a little bit of a taste for the local soft serve cones. Spears over to Besto, Besto on the Brownless, here comes he Abbott! <laughs> Had a lot of fun, you, you kids, and that's what keeps me alive. And, uh, you know, got, uh, got a real good feedback. And uh, it was a great time of my life. Now, talking about time of my life, I spent probably three quarters of my life at a place called Naruma on the south coast of New South Wales. And some of you in Australia particularly will recognise that uh, not very long ago, Naruma was right in the middle of those horrible bushfires that almost took out the complete east coast of the Australian mainland. And uh, my wife and I and children used to spend countless hours up there. We started off in a tent. We then, uh, I think we hired a flat, we hired a house, and then we bought a house. And a part of, uh, you know, of Matthew and Rachel being our family, our children, our other children were uh, dogs. And in this particular case that I'm going to show you, there was uh, Mr. and there was Reggie. And, uh, you know, just absolutely part of the family. Reggie was a lab cross, a little bit of a mixture. And Mr. had more pedigrees than Prince Charles. Well, that's not, that's not much of a recommendation. But anyhow, you know, good on you, your Royal Highness. I hope you're enjoying the show. So we're going to go to Naruma, south coast of New South Wales, put the boat on the back of the Nissan, get the dogs in the back, head down in search of some Chinese fish, some Wai Ting, Daniel... Press that button now. <laughs> Look at that! The old bearded burbler, he's in his element. <laughs> Threw it into his mouth. Unbelievable, mate. It's just like nature. It's what we're all about. I tell you what, I tell you. <laughs> this is just fantastic. Wagons, ho! for the rabbits. Yes, when they think it's safe to come out. Oh, animal. I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing.
You ready, you blokes? It's time, OK? G'day, folks. And I tell you what, what a beautiful morning. Come on, let's do a spot of fishing. Come on, mister. Come on, off you come. Let's go. Going fishing, eh? Going fishing. Up, mister. Up, mister. Up, bridge. Good boys. That's the boys. A small school of Ludric and a smaller school of yellowfin brim signify that all is well with this magnificent estuarine system. Welcome to Naruma on the south coast of New South Wales. We're midway between Batemans Bay in the north and Marimula in the south. And have a listen to this folks, nature at its best. The bellbirds of the hills really signify to me why I go fishing. The Wagonga Inlet is full of our popular bread and butter fish like whiting, brim, trevally and flathead. The tide is right, the dogs are right, uh, let's go fishing. One of the reasons I use these big floppy rods is that when the fish takes it, he's got to be able to actually take something. And so many of our young kids get a bite and they pull the rod straight away instead of just sort of lifting. And you let the rod do the work. And this is why you'll never ever see these rods in your tackle store because they're just far too big and there's no market for them but they are a specialist rod it's like a specialist rod for fly fishing or a specialist rod for catching a marlin on the continental shelf these rods are designed to favor the way that the biting takes the bait reg if you don't mind i'm doing the script all right i'm doing the script this is the rex hunt show not the reggie hunter show good boy we've got a fish in here folks it's a nice fish and another reason why we've got the big, big, slow, sloppy rods is the fact that these fish, when they become alarmed towards the end of the fight, they then start to dive. Now, we've got a beautiful whiting here. Now, I know a lot of people watching would say, oh, well, that's nothing special. But to me, this is what a whiting is all about. Now, that is an absolute rip snorter. You can see there the little bit of red tubing that I use. I'll just break that off because he's going to be our dinner and that's what it's all about. Reggie, that's not for you, that's for me. Now you sit, you sit, give him a kiss. Give him a kiss. Good boy, you are a clever boy. So there you are folks, the old Chinese fish, the Wai Ting and the bearded burblers having an absolute ball. on this rod and we've got another one Rich. <laughs> Rich. you can't be unhappy with this you can't be unhappy with this going on here look we've got a whiting Reggie look 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 where's it where's the whiting where's the whiting where's the whiting no it's a flathead look another flathead 
Wow, how about that? You want to get into the action too, mister, do you? <laughs> well, look at that. Beautiful little flathead. Barred flathead. This time we can retrieve our hook and give him a little bit of a kiss and be careful when you're doing that, kids, because they've got a few spikes around them and that sort of thing. And isn't that a beautiful example of what the estuary is all about? Away you go, mate. And off he goes. Mister, here, here, up. Are you a good boy? Oh, yes, I love you too. Hope you're enjoying the show, folks. This is Naruma. Reg, there's a bite there. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow, didn't he take that? Look, mister, Reg, it's a brim. Beautiful, beautiful brim. Wow, how about that? Is that a serious brim or not? Reggie, look! 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 Are you satisfied? Well, how about that, folks? A magnificent brim to go with an already equally magnificent whiting. And that's more dinner. I don't know how you're travelling, but I'm travelling OK. And here at Naruma, we've got Graham and Ann's Tucker Taxi. And you can be out here fishing, and you don't have to go home for dinner or lunch or anything like that. Fantastic. Now, Graham, I need a Cornetto and a can of Coke. Thank you very much. Cornetto and a can of Coke. Yeah, How fantastic. You? Thank How you very you? much. Terrific, mate. I've got some nice whiting on board. Hello, Ann. Hello. Nice to speak to you. OK, so this is absolutely fantastic, folks. I'm getting a Cornetto ice cream. Uh, I think the dogs might actually have a go at it. And a Coca-Cola. And there's the money. And thank yeah. you very much to you. That's Graham and Ann. And you know the good thing about it is, folks, the fact is the matter is I just had a bit of a bite. And I lost him. See you later, mate. I lost him. But I tell you what, I've got the ice cream and I've got the can of Coke. If you can better that, right into me. Hey, now we're starting to talk. Now sit, sit, sit. You mind sharing your cone with mister? Look. <laughs> How about that? Well, there you know what makes me tick. And uh, I think since Mr. and Reggie, we might have had uh, Ralph and Dolly, who, who have since, like Mr. and Reggie, gone to God. And now uh, we've, we've, we've got a little whip at cross, and his name is Bruno. And, uh, of course, we've got Jack, who's a golden retriever, our first golden retriever. And uh, the more I spend time with the dogs... <laughs> the more I'm convinced that uh, we could take a lesson out of their book of life. There's no, there's no fine print in their love for you, and that's it. Hang on a minute, what's going on? Hang on. Uh, Mick, I'm just on the air. It did, well, all over the world. What do you mean all over the world? Well, do you know what the world is? I, I'm on the YouTube at the moment. But look, because it's a sense of urgency, Mick, this is Mick. And we wish Mick well, because he hasn't been 100%. I need two dozen small scrub worms and a dozen big scrub worms and a little bottle of uh, vanilla essence. And I'll come out tomorrow when the bridge is not too busy and I'll pick them up. Good on you and all the best to Mel, Mick. Good on you. The silence is working, but I could feel this thing uh, rotating in my leg and I thought, I'll owe me luck's changed, but that's a bit... Mick has got the best scrub worms. And I think... Uh, a few shows ago, I, I, spoke, uh, I spoke of keeping scrubbies, and you can keep them all year round in that peat moss that you put in your hanging basket, that sort of thing. And, and you might say, what on earth does he want a tiny little bottle of uh, vanilla essence? Uh, I've also got some nice uh, aniseed essence at home, and just a little bit of flavour in the burley, which is ground bait for you people across in the Northern Hemisphere, to attract the fish. And with the ground bait and the burley, you feed them just enough to get them interested. So uh, I think you should know exactly uh, that I prepare and I practice what I preach. As I just don't go fishing and fish for something that swims out there. I go fishing like I will be tomorrow for redfin and I will target them with beautiful scrub worms that Mick's got for me right at the minute. Uh, Shroom, uh, he's a great supporter of ours and he's got his own YouTube channel. It's just Shroom, S-H-R-O-O-M. 
And if we want to see a young gun, Mike, there's a lot of young guns around that's fantastic, but this kid, he's going places. And it's not, uh, it's not at home. It's, it's, he's going to actually be fantastic. Uh, fishing at home says hello. We've got Fab Castro, not Fidel Castro. Uh, we've got Hanno at New G Bush Goods. Uh, not long now before your missus, uh, you know, and you uh, are going to be parents, which is fantastic. Uh, New G is in the Latrobe Valley, folks. The, the, the rivers down there, like the Latrobe River, the Lock, uh, the Tarongo, I think it is. It's all closed now, but uh, Hanno's been getting some lovely redfin and lovely bass at the nearby Blue Rock Dam, which filled to capacity and overflowed with our recent floods. Uh, Jinder Tackle and uh, G'day Sir Reggie. I've got an idea who that might be, and uh, didn't Reggie look well? There's no doubt about it. He didn't have the grey like I have. Okay, well, we, we just got... I don't know what a shout is. We've got a cheerio to Royce Adams. Now, there's only one Royce that I've ever known, and that's a bloke called Royce Hart, who I played in premierships with at the Richmond Football Club. But you haven't been 100% Royce, and uh, we really want to just say that life is precious, your family's precious, and work hard to maintain your health because you're needed here as a fine Australian. And I've got a photo here of uh, your Clydesdale. Uh, just absolutely magnificent horses, and those people into the horse scene will know that they are like just absolute gold. Uh, I do drink a little bit of wine. Uh, I, I like just a little bit of a Shiraz, and uh, you know, so don't bother sending me too much. Just a small vat would uh, do. And uh, Tamitha, is it? Tamitha Daniel, she set this up, and uh, young man, you look after yourself. Okay, it's time now to move on. And uh, a lot of you would know that uh, I like fishing in remote places. Cape Don is on the very tip of Australia at a place called the Coburg Peninsula, uh, into the Arafura Sea or the Timor Sea or one of those up there. And there's a lot of sand keys where you can pull up the boat, get off and fish. And you might have just seen me on Rex's Key. Well, we're going to go back to Rex's Key. But Steve Starling and I the target a hammerhead shark. And this is what it's all about. But the highlight that I want to say to you, whether you're John Pierce at Thailand at exotic fishing or you're Shroom down up there in Newcastle or, you know, you, you, you're Mal over there in metropolitan London, is that the basics of fishing are the same, whether you're catching whiting or brim or flathead at Naruma or you're catching hammerhead sharks. You find the fish, you give them something to eat and hold on to your hat. Daniel, press that button again, young man. You're doing well. Those followers of our show would remember our first two sorties here. One with Steve, four and a half years ago, almost to the day, when I hit a big barracuda on the nose with a rattling spot, and we saw the mother of all sharks out there, and that had a big dorsal fin, a big hammer, wasn't it? Mm. <sighs> Boy, he's got some line out. He has got some line out. Folks, while we're here, it's just over here we... Got Nolan, Jackie, and Mike, who are my crew, to get the underwater camera going. The boys here, Roscoe and Johnny, keep on feeding little bits of bait down the trail. Bushy and Buffalo over in the mangroves catching Trevally, Long Toms, Barracuda. As quick as we can get them here, set up a trail. Before the tide turned, all the guts and muck behind us just sort of stayed in the one area. And then Stephen said, look, this tide's turned just behind there where Noel's going to pan around and see those little waves coming in. That's where some sort of wash, Stephen, and that's the secret, wasn't it, to get it down the trail? The tide finally started to run and it took all that burly that had accumulated there in the eddy and washed it out there and instantly it was smorgasbord time. Well, what we're doing, I'm just going forward here and then what I can do is lay back on the shark. There's a lot of stretch in this monofilament. A lot of you people now using fire line and spider wire and that new fang dangled stuff from the states and also from Australia but this got a lot of stretching at this line now this is a serious big shark this is better than going to the gym being a macho man 
Now, do you think you're getting him back in, Rex? Yeah, or is he I'm just get... swimming this way for a look. Oh, he's just swimming, <laughs> but look, mate, I can tell you now, Stephen and the folks right around the globe, I ain't got him, mate. He's got us. And I tell you what, World Championship Wrestling might be the go on pay TV in Australia here at the moment, but you might see World Tag Team Fishing here because I don't know how long, I tell you what, I'm approaching half a century. That's my age. He's approaching half a century in stone. <laughs> no, I just didn't mean that, mate. I was only being right, serious. <laughs> oh, this is great stuff. This is wild. I noticed the birds now. We've moved away up there. They started to come in, and my wife, Lynn, was just collecting some seashells because she knows I like seashells. Shells. Shell shells. Because she sells seashells by the seashore. And she's pointed out some lovely nests up there. So if we actually survive this without having a heart attack or a stroke, we might go up. But did you notice those birds have come in and they're now very territorial about their nest? Yeah. I thought you'd like That's that. Amazing, Just I can't believe the enthusiasm by that man. All he thinks about is fish. He I thinks think... fishing 24 hours a day. I was thinking we might be able to make an omelette with the eggs, actually. Yeah, exactly. And that'll be it, folks. The human incinerator thinking about his comic cuts. I tell you what, take him to the opera and he eats all the popcorn. Unbelievable. Here, look at this! Oh, look at the size of that shark. Got Rowdy Yates here from Rawhide. Look at that. You bring him in, I'll rope him for you, Rex. Look at him up there. Look at oh, him. Look at the size of him. It's a Rex. hammer, isn't it? He's a big hammer. Big hammer. He's going to take off in a minute, Rex. He's not ready for us yet, I don't think. Look at that shark. He's going to go, Rex. <laughs> you idiot. I didn't like the way he looked at me. <laughs> you idiot. I think I speak to 20 million people. You idiot. <laughs> Kids, you don't do this in the bath. He's a beautiful shark, isn't he? Isn't he lovely? He's looking at us, Rex. Keep him coming. That's beautiful, Rex. That's beautiful. You idiot! You absolute idiot! <laughs> oh, you idiot! I got him, Rex! I got him! <laughs> you fool! I got him, Rex! Come on down! Come on down! Hold on to this. Just watch his jaws. I got his tail. Easy. Cut the wire and we'll send him on his way. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. How are you going there, Stephen, with yeah, any wire cutters? Cut. See if you can cut through that wire. Oh, gee whiz, you beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh. Can you get through it, mate? No, I can't. Ah, uh, here, these might do it better. Just a bit cautious of those teeth. I did it. Oh, beautiful. Well, there you are, folks. That's nature at its very, very best. You've got the eyes sticking out of his noggin here. <laughs> but this magnificent dorsal fin. I tell you what, mate. Don't do that with any kind of, kind of sharks, folks. <laughs> I tell you what. Water. Water. Isn't he just sensational? Let's get him back in the water. Watch yourself, Rex. He's ready to go. He's still caught up in that, that's it. On your way, mate, now, on your way. This way. Come on, mate. 
Off you go. Off you go, pal. Off you go. Come on. Come on, mate. No, this way. You come with me. I'll show you the way. I'll lead you to the promised land. Part the sea. And yeah, but yeah, but mate. You get on with it. Come on. You get on with it. Off you go, mate. You're free. You're free. He's all right. You're free, son. Look at that. Let's put it there. <laughs> Adelaide have won the grand final. Brisbane have rung the rugby. I'll tell you what, folks. What do you think about that? We won the shark wrestling, I think, mate. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing for sure is that Lynn will be booking me in for early morning sessions at the gym. This is Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures. Why did they want to call it adventures? <laughs> we had a lot of fun, Steve and I, and uh, the entire crew on that key, which is the sand key out of Cape Don. It's just fantastic, but please don't try that at home. <laughs> You've got to know a little bit about fishing. You saw me hightail it to the right when the, the hammer took off. But uh, look, i uh, got John there from the Wimmera who wants to know what bait. Look, John, it doesn't matter for those. They're just predators. You just, you know, cut up a little bit of trevally like we did and just set the trail and up comes the hammerhead or the trevally or the black tip whaler and uh, away you go. And uh, thank your mother for the rabbits. Now, talking about thank your mother for the rabbits, uh, Jess Barron has asked me, where did that come from? Well, as, I, as a guy called Darren Hinch who came from New Zealand and made himself a household name in television and radio, and he used to sign off on his shows, I thank your mother for the rabbits. And then Darren got the brace and Bixby because I started. I don't care who got it, but the, it, it goes back to the war and uh, the Great Depression, Jess, uh, where people didn't have any money. And that's the same now with COVID. And the government's got to understand that people are going broke. And you say, oh, money's not everything. You want to go to Woolworths or Safeway or Coles and get half a litre of milk and uh, say, I've got no money. They'll lock you up. But on a serious note, thank you, Mother, for the rabbits was an expression people use when they used to, uh, I think it was barter and trade and that sort of thing. So the local lady would make half a dozen loaves of bread and, and trade them for some milk. Or, or a pair of rabbits, or a couple of roosters, or a couple of fresh ducks, or some craze, freshwater craze, and fish, redfin, and trout, and that sort of thing. And, and, and where it came from was the fact that, oh, thank you very much for the bread, Mrs. Johnson. She said, oh, and thank your mother for the rabbits. And that's where it came from. I had no idea, Jess, because I just made that up, but it sounded all right, didn't it, anyhow. Now, uh, Joel, Joel Gala, and not Joel Garner, uh, he was a great West Indian cricketer, Dean Jones, before he lost his life uh, in the subcontinent. Uh, he was saying just, just what an awesome bowler he was because although he was six foot nine, his arm was about three foot six and he, he bowled from about ten feet. And uh, what a tragedy that was with Dean Jones. He enjoyed his fishing and he enjoyed the show. What bait should be using at the Eildon Pondage? The best bait is a mud iron. For those people that don't know, and if you don't know Joel, it's the larva stage of a dragonfly. You know when you get a hot day and the dragonflies hatch out? Well, the larva before it comes out of the water is called a mud eye. And, uh, and some of the streams around there, none better than earthworms, particularly when the streams are a little bit discoloured after a small flood. And in the middle of the summer, grasshoppers. Uh, they are the best bait. And the old piece de resistance is the black cricket. Uh, are we allowed to say black cricket? Yeah, yeah, we are. And the white cricket as well. The black and white cricket, if there is one. Uh, Jinder tackle. I had I go on the goal and Jinder, it did very, very well. Uh, it was, the river was dropping because they'd uh, had their requirement of irrigation water. And uh, we, we fished downstream from Alexander uh, using spinners, which is a gold wobbler type of thing called a tilo. And we got some fantastic fish. They were mainly rainbows, although I did get one brown just before dark. But the goblin is fishing particularly well. And uh, if you get a chance, Jinder, to go up there next season, of course, it's closed now until the first Saturday in September. And away you go. And Fab Castro, not Fidel Castro. Are you making any more fishing shows, Rex? Now, Fab, I'm, mate, I'm in my 73rd year. 
I've cheated the Tobin brothers, who are our local undertakers, by about three or four years. I should have been there, mate, uh, just with a floral display on top of the old uh, cardboard box before they go into the, uh, into the melting pot. But on a serious mate, 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 I'm getting out while I'm ahead, because if you blokes say, oh, we want more, we want more, on a serious note, in my business, the best thing that I learnt from a long, long way back at 3AW on radio in Melbourne here and Channel 7 on television here in Melbourne was you leave the audience wanting just a little bit more. I think that's about it. And now it's time now to get back into the action. Stephen Bushy, the terrible twins, Cape York, the very tip of Australia. I think there's a sign there saying you are at the northernmost point of the continent of Australia. Uh, they're going to fish for mangrove jacks, which to my mind are the equal of any saltwater tropical fish, particularly in Australia, mangrove jack, uh, archer fish and also queen fish. Now the archer fish uh, has a particular trait which we might pick up on this. I don't know whether Bob's been able to edit it in or not, but they actually spit with a big long tongue and uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a line there, but I won't be doing it because it's a family show and they capture the insects and the queen fish, I think we'll just leave it at that. Press the button, will you, Daniel? Over the last couple of weeks on the show, we've shown you some of the fantastic fishing that's available up here on Cape York Peninsula. We've looked at the offshore fishing for pelagic fish and for reef species, and we fish the lower ends of these beautiful estuaries for barramundi and other species. This week I want to show you something a little bit different. We're still in the same area. In fact, the Capricorn Mist is moored in the mouth of the Jackson River here on the western side of Cape York Peninsula. And we've run upstream for about an hour and the river has changed completely. It's narrowed right down and the bankside vegetation has changed from dense mangroves to nipa palms and eucalypt forests. We've got stringy barks and all sorts of beautiful trees up here. The bird life's different and in fact the water is fresh now. You can drink it. It's got a tannin stain in it, beautiful looking water and there's a whole bunch of different species up here. What I'm going to be looking for today are some Saratoga, Archer fish and also some of the saltwater fish that do come this far upstream. There could be small barramundi, mangrove jacks and brim up here as well. So let's see how we go. flash. <laughs> it's a mangrove jack. Gee, that's nice when you see them oh, come right out like that. Yeah, That's a beautiful jack. Yeah, Ooh. isn't that a great fish to get in fresh water? <laughs> now that's what I was saying before. Although we're in fresh water and it's actually drinkable, the tide's pushing in here at the moment, but it's still fresh water. The tide's just backing it up and this beautiful big mangrove jack has come off a, a log and slammed a little lure that I'm throwing for Saratoga and tarpon and so on. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. That's a big jack. Bit nice jack, isn't he? A lot of these tropical estuary fish will come right up into the fresh water. It's not unusual to see big stingrays and sharks right up in the fresh water here. So swimming is definitely out of the question, apart from the crocodiles. Oh, what a beautiful fish they are. Uh, luckily for me, he came a fair way from the snag to chase that lure. And I was able to stop him before he got back into cover. But you'd be pretty happy to catch a mangrove jack like that down in the saltwater, wouldn't you? Let alone up here in the fresh on, on light gear and a little lure. Wow, he's really nailed that lure. Have a look at that. <laughs> That's what he does to little bait fish. He doesn't give them a second chance. There's big canine teeth in there and very powerful jaws. Now, if Mr Jack will just behave himself, I'll lie him here on the deck and get my pliers. I'll borrow these too. Oh yeah, the long ones, that'd be good. He's managed to throw one set of trebles. Look what he's done to these lightweight freshwater gauge, fresh um, treble hooks. He's really made a mess of them. Now, being very careful, I'm just going to slide my finger in there, not actually touching his gill membrane, and open his mouth. It gives you a good idea of his teeth. And you can see that there's just one point of that treble hook in there. Grab it with the pliers, and it comes out as easily as that. And I'll carefully take my hands out, lift him to support his weight. <sighs> And he is going to go 
like a bullet. <laughs> Back down into his snag. And that's the beautiful thing about this northern fishing. You just never know what's going to come along next. Even up here in the fresh water, there's probably a dozen or more species that could come up and eat our lures. That's why I like it so much. A real big fish. Might be an archer. Yeah, it is. It's an archer fish. You little beauty. As soon as it bounced off that stick, he just nailed it. He had it in his mouth and got hooked up the side of the head as well. And one treble's come Gee, out. Yeah, nice fish. Oh, little beauty, isn't he? Now that is an archer fish, also known as a rifle fish. Now the amazing thing about these fish is that they have the ability to squirt a jet of water out of their mouth and actually knock insects down off branches and overhanging foliage. They're a beautiful little fish, native to these northern waters up here very common they grow uh, oh two or three times as big as that and they're great fun to catch on little lures and also very good on fly they'll take a dry fly because of that ability they have you can see the upward sloping lower jaw there and he's actually got a groove in his mouth and that's what he shoots the jet of water out of him by shutting his mouth with a lot of force he squirts the water up now like a lot of these fish up here it's very flat along the top of the back and all these fins angle down so that he can swim along just underneath the surface and he doesn't make dimples and swirls on the surface of the water. All the propulsive force goes downwards and he can sneak up on things that way. He's a beautiful little piece of evolutionary design. Anyway, I better get him back in the water. And off he goes, back into his snag. <laughs> with him. I'll see if we can turn it into a double hookup for you, Bushy. Oh, one had a go at it. That leaf litter makes it hard, doesn't it? The leaves get caught on yeah. there. What have you got? Queenie. Oh, they're still down there. They're after it. Oh! <laughs> this is a good tip, actually. If you get one fish like a queen fish hooked up, if they're a schooling fish like Queenies and Trevally, keep it in the water and it'll keep the other ones around. Give your mate a chance to hook up. And then when he hooks up, you can lift yours out, make another cast, and you can keep a bite going for quite a long time. I don't want to play. No, they're getting a little bit sus now. Again, I've got to remind you that we're fishing in fresh water. This water is actually drinkable here on the surface. There's probably a bit salty down there. Oh, he's got off. Sorry, <laughs> oh, you're right, mate. Woo. Oh, bushy, they're still there, mate. Oh, oh. Just went past it. Can't have a win, Steve. Not they're winning. losing interest. Well, listen, I'll lift this bloke out and let him go. Oh, I don't want to hurt him. I'll just lift him up here and put him on the side because they're pretty spiky, these little queen fish. They can do you quite a bit of damage. I'll show you where the spikes are. If we can get him to settle down, you can see them there on the back. They're like little knife blades and they all angle in different directions. But the ones that always get me are these ones here on the belly, just in front of the anal fin. They're very, very sharp. And that's right where your hand tends to try and go around the fish. Well, what a fantastic session that's been up here in the freshwater section of the Jackson River. It just goes to show the diversity that this Cape York area offers. Everything from the big mackerel and tuna out on the offshore areas to great reef fishing for red emperor and largemouth nanagai and scarlet sea perch, into the estuaries for things like barramundi and jacks and queenfish and cod, and up here into the freshwater. Again, more jacks, more queenfish, saltwater species mixed in with the freshwater species. It's got a lot going for it. I tell you what, I'll be back. Rippers, aren't they? Stephen Bushy. And uh, Stephen, still today, I think, the most technically correct angler both on and off the water. And Bushy, he's like me, he's as rough as guts. Uh, I thought the archerfish had a tongue. I might have been thinking of something else. But anyhow, it, it squirts water and uh, you get my drift. And those queen fish, they call them skinnies, but they're, they're not skinnies in the water, they fight like bilio. Uh, got a bit of a tip for you. I had a couple of uh, inquiries during the weeks uh, gone past about fish hooks. What's the best hook for this? And the, the best hook is, is, is the one that you're comfortable with. But I've got a saying, and I've had it for many, many years, 50 years, I suppose, that you can catch a big and small fish on a small hook, and you can only catch a big fish on a big hook. And that there is the lesson from today from the Reverend Rexy. Uh, just, just use a hook. And just understand that with a smaller hook, you can catch a big fish and a small one. Now, 
A lot of you would recognize the name Mike Spry. He's got a son called Will, and he's a guide in the South Island of New Zealand, which is the land of the long white sheep. And Mike lost his life to cancer many, many years ago. We drifted down the Swappy Plains, and he had a young boy working with him. And uh, he was a very, very good guide called Nick Cush. He wasn't related to the leader of the push. But we drifted down the magnificent Murray River. And my goodness me, could this bloke guide. Because if you can guide me into a trout, you're going to get a box of chocolates. Do your thing, thanks, Daniel. Folks, there's nothing more exhilarating than first thing in a late autumn morning to see the mist rising off the Upper Murray District in southern New South Wales. It's trout water. And this young man today, folks, is going to show me the ins and outs of this mighty river system. Nick Cush is a young man who first came to Mike Spry's fly fishing school a couple of years ago, and now he's one of the chief guides. You're under a bit of pressure here today, young fella. Yes, I am under a bit of pressure today, Rex, but I think that's all in good order, actually. Think you think? Handle. Yes. Well, we'll yeah. see what it's like about four hours later, folks. We are drifting down the mighty Murray in these fantastic boats. They're made for the job. So don't get any ideas, folks, with the tinny and the outboard motor, because you'll end up A over T and maybe in the cemetery. And I can tell you now, it would have been cold there this morning. I think we'll see if there's any trout on the go, son. I think it's a good idea. Come with me, folks. This is going to be fantastic. Stretch of water, this. Oh, you'll be able to see that, no worries. Oh, did you see him? Yeah. <laughs> so they're on the lure, so we could be all right. <laughs> ah, little Blake, about that, uh, that long, folks. I'll tell you what it pays to have a look at what's coming up, folks. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nice water on that left-hand side there, too. It's beautiful. I've noticed sometimes, too, Nick, that you can actually have three or four casts in the same area. If you change lures or change direction of the lure, they'll grab it. It's just yeah. something different, you know? Some sort of a little change. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're funny creatures at times, aren't they? You don't know what they're on or... This is... this looks good water. Fish must be freezing, because I'm cold. Yeah, tell me about it. Gee, whiz. Oh, did you see him? Good one. Did you see him come out? Oh. And he grabbed it, folks. Does that look nice? He grabbed it about two centimetres from the end of the cast. Perhaps if we can go in here and I'll get Lenny's boat man to come in here with me. This is a beautiful fish, folks. Nice rainbow. A beautiful rainbow came charging out of the fast water. And I just decided to try a little deep diver Rapala because I just thought with the metal that I've been using that I really wasn't getting down. And I tell you what, we've got a beautiful little rainbow. Now this is a nice fish. Now what I changed to was that fluorescent colour. It's the fluorescent orange um, of the Rapala range. And just at this time of the year, when these little fish are starting to think about playing mummies and daddies, um, they get a bit aggressive because this is the colour of the trout row. Now these gloves I've got on, folks, are fantastic. These are from Ireland. These are the gloves that keep the tip of your fingers uh, nice and cool, and they've certainly done that. I'm going to take that off, and what we're going to do is just have a look at this beautiful fish. This is a beautifully wild riverbred rainbow trout. They call them steelheads in America, but this is an absolute beauty. Now, this is a very, very nice fish. I tell you what, I reckon I might go upwards of 700 gram 
But there he is, folks. I think it's a he. Looks like a little male. Sometimes in the lakes, you folk get rainbow trout that you don't know what they are. You can see there that crimson tinge that Lenny's picking up there as I hold him there. But the real way to tell a rainbow is spots all on the tail. So I might just call my rowing man in, Nick. And Nick, you can see there that I just have to put him back down there and get my little uh, pliers out just to make sure that he's going to be OK. But folks, this is absolutely magnificent. <laughs> You'll be right, little fella. You'll be right. Just, uh, just take it easy, because you know I'm a fish kisser, mate. Now, we shouldn't have a lot of problem getting that top hook out. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I'm not a dentist. So there you are, folks. A magnificent rainbow trout, the kiss of life, and you watch him go back into his home. Absolutely beautiful. Slow it up here a bit. Oh, did you see? Oh, did you see him come up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great stuff, Fair. Fair Nickham. I love this sort of stuff. They're just starting to show a little bit of interest. And uh, what you... <laughs> Oh, gee whiz. I tell you what, she's only a little tacker, folks. But I tell you what, I talk about persistence all the time. And what we've done, Nick and I, is persist. Because for two and a half, three hours, I might as well have been standing outside the Flinders Street Station. But over the last 15 minutes or so, these little trout, well, they've started to just get a little bit of a hurry up. Now, I won't hurt you too much, mate. I'll just get that out of the system. Like that. Give you a bit of a kiss and just let you slide back into the mighty Murray River. It's not bad, folks. We've got to look after it, take your litter home, ask the farmers for permission to come in, and you can fish here with your grandkids. <laughs> that was fantastic. Renewing a lot of memories. That's the good news. The bad news, I have no idea. No recollection whatsoever of that trip. I have no idea what we were doing there. Uh, but anyhow, Nick Cush did a fantastic job just keeping that raft. And on a serious note, I said earlier on the show, don't go up there in your little tinny because you'll come undone and, uh, and that will be it. Okay, now, uh, if you want to surprise anybody, uh, I'm on Cameo, which if you can just Google Cameo and have a look at it for a birthday, you've got Father's Day coming up, we've got any special occasion, you know, you haven't been well, that sort of thing. It just keeps us in touch with you fantastic people. And I hope you've enjoyed the show, and we're going to do it again very, very soon. But also, uh, just don't forget my Facebook page. Just dial in Rex Hunt, and away you go. And say good day to me on the messenger, and I'll try and get back to you. That's if I know where the button is. Thanks very much to young Daniel and uh, to old Bob. And on behalf of the whole Rex Hunt Adventures, Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures crew, we'll bid you farewell from Australia. 